Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the John R. Wood Masterclass featuring our one of our resident experts, Greg Gorman, who is a CRS instructor, um, just closed his largest deal ever and uh, is working hard this summer. I know. Congratulations to, to David and Greg. Awesome job to you. And um, Greg, I think you wanted everybody to mute themselves for the time being. And we're going to have time for everyone to, to uh, participate. But if you have a question or a comment, make sure you uh, post those in the chat because our Tess will be monitoring that and she will pose those questions to me and then we'll get into Q&A uh, after a quick session. And then the chat, just in case you don't know it, if you hover over the bottom menu bar, the chat is down there. Just put your cursor over it and then that menu bar will show up if it's not already showing up. Um, First question for you, Greg. Do you have um, somebody or something um, that has made a, a, a very positive difference in your life? And, and if so, can you share a little bit about that with us? Oh, that'll be an easy one. Uh, and thanks for asking that question. I've had a lot of mentors in my life down the road, so uh, it's really hard to pick one over another. But I will tell you one of the most central positive influences I've had in my life has been my grandmother. And so for those of you that um, have um, our grandmothers or grandfathers, there is no, no better mentor in the world to have someone participate in your family and your life like that. So my grandmother was always the inspiration. She was kind of the counterculture. Um, instead of uh, baking cookies and doing things like that, that a lot of grandmothers do, she was building houses and inspired me to go beyond a little town that I grew up in and, and go out and be somebody. So that's the that's answer. Awesome. That's awesome. And um, so our topic today is um, social media and how you're using it in real estate. With it being such a low inventory market, um, are, are you using social to get listings? And, and, um, and, and how are you doing it? What tools? Do you, do you use? Right. Well, it's, of, of course, when you talk about social media, that's such a broad topic. I'm going to try to try my best to bring that in a little bit today. And we're going to talk about, um, we're going to focus on Facebook and videos. Uh, but we can touch on other subjects around social media. And yes, we do use that. I love it um, because it brings in business. Uh, for example, David launched one of our new listings in Fort Myers, a personal friend. So we listed his condo. We've already gotten three responses from Facebook, uh, people who are not really affiliated with us, but uh, affiliated with friends. And they saw the posting and are re immediately reached out for a showing. So uh, does it work? Absolutely. Well, just take it away, Greg. Run. I don't want to take any, any <laughs> of your time. You, you could speak um, just nonstop. Run away with it. Okay. So I'm assuming that each and every one of you use social media, no matter what uh, your role in the real estate business is. is. Would that be a fair statement? So some yes and some no. Bonnie, we can work on that. <laughs> you have such a likable face, you have to be in front of people um, and do that in social media as well. That's why you've connected so well in your past because uh, just that friendly face. So let's just jump right in. And I'm gonna talk about, um, especially the little things that you can do along the way to post to social media. We all know that we can share our listings and I hope you do that primarily on a business page and not on your personal page because that gets to be a little annoying. Um, I have, I don't know, five or 6,000 people on my personal page and if I started reviewing everyone's postings on their personal page about listings, um, that would gobble up a lot of space right there. So have a business page. I think uh, you can cross affiliate between business and personal and I would encourage you to, to post to all medias including Pinterest, Instagram, LinkedIn. So and the list just goes on and on. Some of you are using TikTok. That's not one of my favorites but it's a tool and it's very effective. So anything that you can use is better than nothing. So 
social media, believe it or not, is replacing so much of print advertising. Um, and that's true. And I just read a statistic uh, that popped up that kind of took me by surprise. And ads on messaging will take over our future. So instead of um, seeing more ads in newspapers and things like that, we also, anytime we log in, if we've been to like a Home Depot or been out shopping on uh, any website, you know, when you log back in, those little cookies start showing up and the things that you've been searching for will show up on all those pages, including all your social media pages. So uh, let's talk about content and ideas. First of all, I want you to think about doing things that other people are not doing. I want you to keep it fresh and I want you to be consistent on what you're doing. So if you post it once every month, that's not very consistent. But if you posted once a day, uh, you might find that that's far more effective. And you can post about a whole bunch of different things. And we're going to get into some of those ideas and sharing. And I hope as you listen to this broadcast that you will go into um, your own uh, chat and put in some comments. So the first thing I want you to think about in your topics, I want it to be short. I want it to be very specific and typically the best posts are going to be one subject, one topic. So I don't want you to cover a whole bunch of things in your, uh, in your postings. You know, don't do three or four things at once. Again, be consistent, make it short, make it specific and one topic. And here's a little tool. We talked about this on the last time I did a master's class. Make your postings look like magazine articles. And the one and the best way I think you can do that is with Canva. C-A-N-V-A dot com. And there are two versions. There's a free version and then there's a paid version. And by all means, we're in the business, so it's not a big expense. Go out there and get the commercial version version. You'll be able to brand it to yourself, brand it to John R. Wood. Um, it's easy. Every posting that I do, you see in the bottom uh, right hand side of this screen, I always post everything because anything that I do, I think it's real estate affiliated and I want to make sure that um, people are, are out looking to get us in trouble. So if we're advertising a listing or a property or anything about real estate, we need to make sure that they know that we're affiliated with John R. Wood as a brokerage. So um, let's keep it safe, uh, but let's make it beautiful, make it magazine quality. And Canva allows you to do that quite easily. Um, it's an easy program. If you can drop and drag photos on any program, you're gonna be able to work with Canva. You can download it. You can turn pictures into GIFs and you can make them uh, action oriented or you can make it a short little movie. So all those things will work and you can post those across all, all, all media. In fact, with Canva, I made the background, the virtual background that you see uh, behind Tess and me. So those are easy programs that you can use. So I want you to think about, uh, and this is gonna be hard for a lot of you, I want you to think about making a video per day. But that's not how you're going to start out, right? Everyone do this because I know better. But if you made one a week, would that work for you? I hope it would because it's really easy. So in order to make a video, and, and by the way, I know what you're all thinking. I'm not pretty enough. I'm not handsome enough. I'm too fat. I'm too old. Not dressed. Okay, so leave all that to the side. And I want you to think about this. People really don't care what you look like they really care that you can solve their problems. How about that as a thought? So you need to get over, am I this or if I'm that, I'm too, too this or too that, it doesn't matter because people just wanna know that you care and that you can help them solve their problems. And video is a fun way to do that. Um, and how many, and you, you can just raise your hand uh, if you've done this, how many of you have done Facebook Live? So I'm not seeing a whole lot of hands. Okay, there we go. So that's really good. Um, and if you're not comfortable with live broadcasts, think about this. On Facebook, you can take your phone, do a live broadcast, and up in the top right-hand corner, you can see where they're posting. You can go to uh, public, which is the default setting, or you can go to your friends, or you can just, just do you. 
So if you don't want to go uh, broadcast live, you can actually do that same recording, but just record it to yourself. And if you don't like it, you can just get rid of it. It's not really live until you make it live. Uh, but as you practice and as you get better and you're more comfortable in front of the video, then you can broadcast live. And I think people love that. Now, for those of you who jumped on the um, class this morning, we saw Corey. She's volunteering today um, at the corner of Pine Ridge and Airport. And she, with a bunch of other neighbor people, are doing a cleanup. So Corey was just on in her cap and her neighbor t-shirt, and she was doing a live broadcast. And I think that's all awesome because people really want to know there she is, she's joined us again, so now you can see what I'm talking about. So people really need to see that we're real people, that we're not just realtors out to get the real estate business. Do we like that? Absolutely. But they wanna know that you're a real person as well. So share your life, don't be afraid to just show them who you are and what you're doing. Uh, be comfortable in front of a camera. So let's talk about some ideas, and this is where I hope I don't see any chats yet, uh, I hope they're coming, but let's talk, talk about some things that you can do on video. Just like when we have a listing. Now I tell my team in the, in the MLS comments, please, for heaven's sakes, don't tell me about how many bedrooms and bathrooms, that's what the MLS description is. Uh, it's not intended for that because we have all the other fields in MLS that we can put all that data into, correct? I want you to think about storytelling. You need to close your, your eyes and open up your mind and say, this is why I would want to buy that property, and then tell the story. And I want you to do the same thing about the videos that you create. So that MLS comment section, that's your storyboard there. And we have plenty of comments to make it interesting. So I would challenge you all to go back into your MLS listings now. And if you find that you've described the bricks and mortar, Let's see if we can be a little bit more creative and start telling a story. And if you have a hard time with that, this is one of the things that we do with uh, new listings, especially those that uh, may be on the market for the very first time. We ask our clients to fill out a little page of the top 10 reasons why they bought their home. So they actually will tell you the story and you can fill in all the blanks. And if you need to help inspire, there's some of the ideas, well, what attracted you to the house? What attra attracted to you to the, maybe it's the view, maybe it was the number of rooms for all their family that matched. So we want to tell a story. The same would be true when we create videos. So we want to create a little storyboard. For those of you that have been in broadcasting or um, in front of a lot of people all the time, this will come very naturally to you. For everyone else, the best way to start out is to start making um, a what I call it is a written storyboard. So you have an idea and you'll want to put one or two or three bullet points. And if you can put that in front of you and visually, if you can pick up on a point, then you can move forward in your, in your broadcast. You'll move forward with your thought. So having a written storyboard. Now above my screen this morning, I have a few notes. You'll get those because I've already sent those to Tess. Um, it's really easy for me to speak from the cuff. Uh, because this is my 29th year in real estate, and I'm not the one that's been in the market the longest on this broadcast, because Marie and Norm are on here, and I think they they invented real estate. That's I can think of that's what I remember. So they're um, they they're all hats. At, uh, they're not old. They're just old hats at this business, and they do such a great job. So having that storyboard, nonetheless, will give you those ideas, and it won't let you uh, have that uncomfortable pause, like, oh my gosh. What, what was my thought? And then you want to turn the video off or you want to restart. Now I'll give you a little hint. If you're not broadcasting live and you're just doing video, if you do more than one or two takes, then it starts to get very sloppy and you're going to lose all your points. So I would rather you just do you and do it the first time and be comfortable with it. If you've written your storyboard down and you're comfortable with the bullet points that you have, then you'll easily move through that presentation. So now I have a few ideas about what we can do for videos. And of course, it's as big as the sky. And that's the way I like to think. So here are a few thoughts. Quick videos are in and around our business would be a place to start. 
So what does that look like? How many of you have had a home inspection in the last week or 10 days on a property? Okay, have you ever thought about perhaps getting with your home inspector? Because we're all, all there at our home inspections, right? So why don't you ask the home inspector if he's working on, for example, the uh, HVAC system. Ask him a couple of questions about the HVAC on camera. As an expert, what should the homeowner be doing with their AC system in the future? Does that make sense? So it would make a great video for some, someone else to watch. How often should I change the filter? Um, should I look in the drain pan to make sure there is any water? If I see mold and mildew, what should I do? Those are the kind of questions that you would want to ask your inspector. Um, how many other areas of the home could you ask questions about a particular system? So I want you to think about that and then hopefully we'll start seeing little ideas over here in the chat box uh, down to the right. So I have that. What about the outside of the property? How about doing a short little one minute video on uh, best, best tips for cleaning your gutters? Maybe you have a gutter guide that you, uh, or a gutter company that you've gone to. They're your go-to people. So invite them uh, to come do a quick video with you. It helps you and it helps them. It actually promotes business in and around our real estate. So pool equipment. How many of you are experts at, even with your own pools, um, that you've mastered that? I certainly haven't. Um, I just want somebody else to do it, make sure it's pretty and running and clean and the fountains are all running. Um, however, there are things that you can do uh, about, so what if you find around the tile that's not clean, or what if you find that, you know, you get in the pool and you come out and your, your skin is all itchy. Uh, so those are the things that while that inspection's going on, you could do a quick video. You could get two or three things done all at once, and then you'll have several days or maybe even several weeks worth of little videos that you could post. Um, twice a year, what do we do? Um, in our homes. We change the batteries and our smoke detectors, right? How can we expand that? Um, and it's so important. You could, you, uh, one of the postings that I've done in the past on social media is with uh, interviewing the uh, battalion fire chief staff because they will not only tell you about the safety of smoke detectors, they'll tell you all things that are fire hazards in your home. Uh, what about keeping a fire extinguisher? We may have them in our home for 10, 15, 20 years and never think about, is it still an active charge uh, in our kitchen? Because it just sits there. Hopefully you haven't needed the use of a fire extinguisher, but in uh, inviting people who are experts in and around the home, that's a perfect way to inspire little videos. And couldn't we all use those um, in John R. Wood? Uh, which your company has done such a fabulous job with So We, so we Flow Life. Uh, and this would be an excellent way to add to all the videos that we currently have. So what about floor care, duct cleaning, um, someone to come once a year and clean the dryer vents, right? And that will go back to, if you've ever spoken with anyone about house fires, um, that's a big thing because we never clean our, our uh, laundry ducts and that's a fire hazard by the way so little things like that have you ever opened up your closet or gone into a listing and you think you're taken back because you open it up and think oh my god i hope nothing falls out so why not do a little video about closet organization um, and there are lots of people out in our industry that can come and help you with that and do a little video because you get to then be the interviewer and then naturally those things come back to us. So anything around the home inspection, anything around the house as far as maintenance, things like that are, trust me, the population out there is just interested in the well-being of their property and knowing that you care because it could be those little things that might bring or inspire your next referral or your next opportunity. Okay. So um, now Jill, Jill Piskowski had posted something in chat um, to everyone, just sharing an additional tip. Make sure your seasonal buyers know that they need a house checking service when a house is vacant and why. What can happen if the AC stops working and the water should be and that the water should be uh, shut off? 
checking up on the pool water level, et cetera. Also, Scott um, Kelsey shared um, with regard to Canva Pro, he said that's $10 a month. Right. It's terribly expensive, right? It's actually an investment <laughs> in our business. So it's, it's so far less than any ad that we can do, and it's an unlimited use. So uh, thanks, Jill, for that. And that kind of reminds me, too, on our seasonal clients. So what would be the best time to reach out to those seasonal clients? Uh, one, when they arrive, and two, when they leave. So, so many people that are leaving for the summer, what well, used to be uh, prior to this year, they would leave for the summer. And so instead of winterizing a house, we call it summarizing a house. So all those steps uh, for especially those people who are new to our Southwest Florida climate, there are a lot of things that we need to know. One is humidity and humistat and putting uh, things over the toilet so all the water doesn't evaporate, little things like that. Each little video makes you the expert and it makes you a caring person in, in front of your, uh, your clients and your friends. So I think that is a way to draw business right back to you. So let's talk about some fun things that you could do to social media. And it still makes you the expert because you get to brand everything that you do. So one of the things that I truly love is cooking. So I've done cooking classes with clients. I've done cooking classes with kids. We've done ornament making um, uh, classes around Christmas time. Uh, we've done uh, ornament uh, making processes around Hanukkah, all different kinds of things. So those have probably been our most uh, watched videos that we've had in the past, and they're a lot of fun. Now you can do demonstrations on cooking, as long as they're not long and drawn out, you're not videoing for 45 minutes, for example, but you can kind of do that entire video and you can cut and paste. So it looks like one of those things that we see on social media where it takes three seconds or whatever to put a, uh, um, a dish together. So you can do that. All kinds of kids activities. And we're seeing a lot of that on social media right now because so many of us are, are confined. The kids are not in summer camp. Uh, they're not in school. So I see, I'm looking through this whole storyboard in front of me and I see all these talented people with talented ideas. And I know you guys have great ideas of how it would be to inspire kids to do some, something uh, and do it something different. Maybe in summer, uh, we see um, Corey all the time posting about her trips with her kids and it's all about water. And every time I see her postings, it's like, oh, that's really cool. I've not been there. I'd like to go there. And that's what you inspire every time you do a video. So gardening tips um, is another fun thing. We've got, I've gotten a lot of feedback on gardening. It's a lot of fun. Uh, it's a lot of fun for me. So I think things that are fun for you, you'll find a new audience and people will tell you little tips or you're doing this uh, best practice or you could do something a little differently and have a different outcome and just be open to that. Um, I get corrected all the time. I call it correction or uh, improving ideas all the time on some of the posts that I have. And you just have to be okay with that. Uh, some will love them, some will, will not. Um, uh, a few weeks ago, Amex actually sent something to me. Um, and I think you can Google that and still get this. And it's 100 things to do at home. So if you go out to Google and type in uh, Amex's 100 things to do at home, uh, those are 100 ideas that you could do with video and social media postings. Um, that's not our competition, by the way. That is a compliment to our business. So if we could do things like, um, if you see an ad on TV that you really like, try to mimic and mock that. And you can bring that into an idea for our business or, or for something fun that you could post. Because I will tell you the most um, people that are out there that have huge Twitter accounts, huge social media accounts of any kind, they're fun help people. And if you look like you're having a good time and you're an expert in your arena, then you'll have a lot of followers. Uh, and it'll be a lot of fun. And people will be more willing and, uh, and comfortable with referring you if they know you're a good character, you're ha you know how to have fun, and you know your business. So you can ask us, uh, especially for, uh, I think everyone that's on the, uh, 
screened out. You've been in the business a long time, so real estate's not new to us. Let's don't get bored with it. Let's have fun, find things that we can do differently. You're a master at the real estate skill. And then other resources that we have is realtor.com. Uh, they post articles all the time that we can use on social media. And I don't want you to just copy and paste. I want you to add, put that plus plus to it. Um, uh, I use a company called In Touch, And I think Marie, may, you might be using that too. It's the Pat Zabie um, thing that's out there. I see postings all the time. Um, and instead of just allowing that to post, add something to it. Uh, add a thought or an idea that you can bring to those posts. Uh, make it you. And then uh, for those of you that love to just search on the web, House, H-O-U-Z, um, great place to inspire new ideas. Uh, we find the color of the year. Um, just being on house.com will make you a better realtor. And I'll tell you why it will make you a better realtor. Because you're going to be able to go in and help someone else stage their property. So now it looks like a magazine uh, room. You can offer assistance, um, guidance, paint colors, uh, furniture placement, just by going into house.com and seeing what looks really great. Um, so those are some of my ideas. Now, let's turn on our mics and let's do some Q and A, because that's mine. Oh, I have another tip while you're doing that, while everybody's turning their mic back on. I wanna give you a few tips about making video. Uh, one of the things that I use is, um, this is called, well, let's see if I can put it in front of my face. This is a Gimel, uh, and this one's by Osmo, O-S-M-O, -O, I think it is. Um, and it just holds my camera, and I can just push a button, and let's see, you can see it rotates back and forth. The nice thing is, as I'm walking through a property, and you probably uh, use the same people that we use, um, doing video walkthroughs of a property. Instead of that step, every time you take a step, the camera goes up and down. These gimbals will help stabilize anything that you're filming. Um, now with that comes a challenge because oftentimes we will point the camera in the other direction. And if we turn that camera or we turn the, uh, the video to the other side of the camera, we may lose our voice. So one of the things, and because I speak all over the country, one of the things that I've learned, uh, you can use your earpiece, oops, there we go. You can use your earpiece that we normally do on the phone. So this doesn't look very good, does it? Go to this way, because it really doesn't look good if you're doing a video. But what I've learned is that Bluetooth mic can fit right on my shirt, and now I have a mic. So no matter which way that camera is pointed, my voice is gonna carry on that video. So that's just a little little video tip that I have for you. Okay, so let's have some question answers and everyone feel like they, uh, if you wanna participate, this is an open, open book now. Tess, do you have anything you wanna bring? Um, so and I want you to, to just share everything that comes to mind. I, I, I don't wanna take any of your time, but um, I see a lot of people who are probably doing some things differently. Jo you know, Jill, you shared an idea. Um, Scott, Scott, do you want to share anything? Scott Kelsey, you're our resident video expert. He's like, no, he's the man. <laughs> he has nothing to say. That's, that's I not teach, my... I teach my classes. This is your, this is your show today. Uh, no, and actually, it's all of our show today. So that's yeah. that's a really good thing. I already I've had so I've had my time now. So it's it's let's let's all participate. Well, I will add that Scott, um, you do a video class, correct? Like yep. you know, and and when you do that, you share like what tools, different types of tools, the typical pricing of like a gimbal and and those yep. kinds of we things. Go, I break all that down. We go over topics of what. Um, that I suggest we sh that agents should shoot it's pretty much the same thing that um, that Greg's saying here. It's it's make it make it fun. Uh, a lot of the ones that I get the best interaction is um, the storytelling. So the same thing with um, what do you what are you going to miss most about this house whenever you're selling it? So they're going to say I'm going to miss Thanksgiving dinner with my family. I'm going to miss the grandkids coming and swimming in the pool. If you're selling that emotion, it's a whole different 
it's just a different level of marketing than just here's the home. If you the the emotion selling is it, it it seems to work pretty well with people watching the videos. And the more you do of that, the the better you get because it's a struggle with my team. David likes to talk about bricks and mortar, and his mom's the same way. But if you are in person with them and ask them about the property, then that's what you do with storytelling. So, um, Spencer, you had a comment. Uh, Greg, I just wanted to ask you your opinion on not necessarily being as progressive on the leading edge of things, but the importance of consistency and what you find works for you and you know how important that consistency is. Well, if I didn't do a posting a day, I would probably have people coming out of the woodwork wanting to know if I was still alive, still in the business, or what happened. So if you tell them you're taking a social media pause, that's one thing. But being consistent is everything in our business, just like real estate. So if you start out posting once a day, then keep that up. Um, David, can you turn your... Yes. I'm getting um, Greg, back on my own. Kathy He asked, um, how long do you think videos should be? Great question. Uh, and Scott would probably confer on this. If you're doing a walkthrough of a house or you're doing um, uh, a topic, and remember, when, one of the most important things that I can stress to you is be short, be specific, and be singular topic. Because otherwise, you're going to do a four or five minute video. People start looking at that video for maybe 10, 15 seconds. If you're not clear on where you're going, then they're just gonna skip over to the next video. So short, specific, one topic. Uh, one minute is the target, one minute, 30 seconds is the max. I don't care if you're doing a 7,000 square foot home or you're talking to the AC guy. Um, one minute to 90 seconds, that's it. Okay, and Lori Zorb asked, how do I get more people to my business page? Great question. Um, Here's a funny thought. Why don't I ask? Because we get so much we get so much out of just asking people why not join my Facebook page? Uh, you have to give them a reason why though. Uh, maybe there's some uh, tip. Maybe it's a restaurant. Uh, one of the things that we always do, and it's a real, real, little tough right now, but if we're a restaurant, uh, take a picture of your dish and say why you liked it or why you're at why you chose that restaurant. Um, so you can have all kinds of things like that. Uh, people search our pages, whether it's business or personal, all the time, and then we get questions about places we've been or activities that we've done. Uh, they wanna make, you, uh, make sure you're human as well. So have a personal page and a business page, and it's also okay on your business page to post a few personal things that you're doing because people wanna know that we're real and that we have lives. And uh, some of my interests may be the interest of what you're doing or somebody else. So that's a great way to inspire. And Lori um, had a follow-up comment. She said, I've tried to ask and they say I'm already on um, her personal page. Right. Well, if, um, if they're personal friends of hers, if you go to your business page, you can do that invitation that goes straight out to people. Uh, some will, some won't, and you're gonna have to be okay with so what move on to the next. Uh, make sure that you're doing, if you do strong topics um, that spark emotion, and I'm not talking about religion or politics, uh, let's stay away from that because um, you'll get all kinds of stuff that are out there and we see that every day on our morning news broadcast. So you can still be inspirational and have uh, interesting topics that are out there. Maybe there's a, uh, let's talk about specific to Naples. Uh, art festivals, both on Third Street, Fifth Avenue. Those are fun things. <clears throat> but what about going to uh, a paint or pottery class? That's a lot of fun. Uh, what about going to the opening of a new store or talk about the opening of a new movie? Uh, be in front of those marquees if you go to uh, when we can go back. Uh, those are the kind of topics and ideas that really bring people to your website. Uh, to your social media pages because it's fun, by the way. And if you're fun in person, you're probably going to be fun as a realtor. 
uh, Gary Mills had um, shared that he uses an app called Teleprompter, which allows him to write a script. And when he's filming, he's reading from that script and staying on target. And he says it's also free. So bonus. Great tip. I don't think I uh, have ever heard of that one. That's an awesome tip. Thanks, Gary. I, I use that same app for um, the videos that I shoot inside of our studio at John R. Wood. Awesome. <clears throat> That's really good. Lori what other comments or you. questions? Lori wanted to say thank you to you, Greg. Oh, oh hold on. Here's one from Diane. Uh, and you guys can unmute yourselves and ask your questions if you want. Diane Glover is saying um, that she collects and grows orchids and has found that when she posts photos about her orchids that just bloomed, um, her likes are so much higher than if she posts a simple real estate message. People see her more as a person, not just as a realtor, always out to get their business. And in my experience, that's true. I share stuff that Lawrence Yoon has posted, but, but if I share something about my dog, you know, likes go through the roof. It, it's, it's true. People love lifestyle kind of topics. They do. And uh, something else that you, you shared in the past that I didn't know when I first met you is you were a painter and quite gifted at painting. Thank you. Thank and you. just that, I mean, people are attracted by that and, and, and having that comment about the, uh, growing orchids. Um, if you've got a question, why not go to Driftwood or go down to the botanical gardens and get experts to even one plus your idea and how easy it is to grow orchids or how difficult it can be or if you've got something that's not performing very well, um, how do you take care of that? <clears throat> hey, Greg, would you not agree in your uh, 29 years of doing this that what used to be, you know, got to have a website, got to have a website, got to have a website. Now, I still think you have to have a website. And, that, you know, I'm very proud of what we're able to provide at the cost uh, to our realtors through John R. Wood, whether it be that or another option. Has that become a static medium at this point that is necessary to be like an entree into bigger things? is where it's at social media. Well, I think you've hit on something um, that is not only about a website, but it'd be about our social media pages, and that's the static part. And that's our issue. If we just do a website and never change anything, people will stop going to that website, period. Um, I think that's one of the beautiful things about So We Flow Life. Uh, it's bringing that website now to life because we're not just talking about a community, we're showcasing that. So I think we can learn that lesson from what, uh, what we have with So We Flow Life and add to that. We can add our own little videos to our site. And trust me, if Scott sees something that he likes that you've got on your website, he follows all of us, uh, and I know Tess does and, and Spencer, then they'll add that. To John R. Wood, and that's the whole goal of today's broadcast: is less little, let's do things that we can add to complement so we flow life, uh, not only for our own social media, but as a company, uh, all the things that we can add. Uh, there's no way that with our 600 plus um, uh, team members of John R. Wood that anyone can cover all the little things and facts and ideas and places that we go each and every day. What we can do is uh, one little piece and one little bit at a time, and we can add to the greatness of our company. I mean, we're 58 year, uh, since 1958, we've been around. Look at all the things and people we touch. Look at all the philanthropy, uh, all the ideas that we can bring back to social media to show that we're the one stop. If you're thinking of real estate, this is where you wanna be because one, uh, we're talented, gifted people in real estate, but we're also a lot of fun and gifted in a lot of other areas. And we share that. Well, I, oh, I'm sorry, who was I talking over? Okay. Okay, I'll just talk, uh, Greg, that's excellent points. I continually always hear from realtors who are very consistent in what they do on social media that whether they can attribute the direct sale to it or not, that without it, it would be a detriment. Um, 
and that you know most recently i had one of our realtors say you know they're going to one of their tried and true customers who called them to list their home and uh the first thing those customers did was introduce uh the our realtor to their grandchildren who happened to be staying with them uh because of what's going on in the world for a period of time and that grandchild child of course was 26 27 years old but they asked for a card and asked for their facebook id linkedin id etc because they wanted to check them out which means exactly what greg is saying if you haven't posted anything and forget a year try three months or if it's not relevant or you don't have a, a current photo if your photo's got more mesh in front of it than a mash in it uh you know you you may want to think about going real people don't it's not the same as it used to be um real is where it's at and <clears throat> if they hadn't had their pages up to date and been involved who knows where that might have led because that leads to a bigger discussion of whoa their business page they're not doing anything so you know grandma grandpa what's going on with these people and you say that it brings up you know one of the best things about uh, video is let's not let's not lose our history one of the best things you can do is go to a grandparent and just ask them for a quick story. Uh, if you want to know about the history of Naples real estate, go see the Harrises, interview them. They'll tell you so much that's gone on. If you want to know um, about cameras and about topics and how to have fun, go to Scott Kelsey, go to his class. Uh, it's awesome. Uh, so all that inspiration is out there. We just have to take the, uh, um, the opportunity and make it our own. We have a question from Kathy He, and Kathy wants to know, how would you discuss COVID now on social media? Many people are asking her about Florida and the spikes of COVID here. Uh, excellent question, uh, and I've already done that. You can go back on some of my uh, Facebook pages. I think you need to be genuine. Uh, I think you need to be inspirational because at the very beginning, everyone thought that real estate was just going to tank because of COVID. And I think we've, uh, at this point, seen quite the, uh, a different swing in real estate. So many people in big metro areas are discovering that being in those areas, probably it's not the best for their health. And they're looking for other locations that may be uh, the best for them. So, uh, of course, I think if you were talking about where in this particular time every ad on TV is um, the you know the leading time in the times like these get away from that kind of conversation let's talk about um, what's safe here what's safe for kids uh, we can mock the media not mock but we can um, recreate what the media has out there on schools um, shopping what does it mean to go out on a real estate tour now when we have people that are traveling from outside our area uh, I'm going to ask them to follow us in the car. I'm going to ask, uh, let them know that any property we go into, uh, we'll have to have a mask on. If they don't have them, we'll, we're happy to provide that. What does it mean to host an open house? Uh, we have the flyer from John R. Wood that we post on uh, the doors of our uh, open houses, for example. We expect if you want to come into the property that you'll be masks. We ask that you don't touch anything. We'll host anything that you want. You want us to open up a cabinet, a door, things like that. So just share with them the changes that we've gone through as agents, uh, what we do on an everyday basis. I think that's uh, uh, how I would go about that. Uh, and, and I would add to that too. Mike Dodge gives us every single week an update on where we are as far as showings, how we performed against last year, uh, those are the things that people that are asking about real estate questions, they want answers to. And you can be that expert. And Mike helps us with that. And that's just another benefit of the company that we're in. Jill. I'm working on my fifth virtual sale. So what I have done is I've contacted some of my buyers from years past that still haven't purchased. And when I have a conversation with them, I let them know 
or they're very interested to learn what am I doing? How am I doing it? And because some people just don't understand how they can be up north and buy. And I've done it now five times. I have three more to close and they're on their way to closing and they will eventually come down and walk right in with the keys to their home. And they've all either been here or actually two people have not been here at all. One bought in a community that he didn't even step in, but he trusted me through a referral. And when he actually did show up, he said, oh my gosh, this is so much better than I could have even imagined. So by explaining to people how it works, I think it takes some of the fear because not everybody wants to come down and look and then go home and then go through the closing process or stay long enough to go through inspections and all the mortgage um, process. So by me being here telling them what I'll do for them, they're like, oh, I didn't know you would be at my inspection. I didn't know you would be in touch with my mortgage person. I didn't know you could let the appraiser in. So that kind of alleviates their fear. And they're really interested to know that people are doing this. I can't, I, I am just so busy. I can't even imagine I'd be as busy as I am right now. I haven't stopped since January with about four weeks off in April. It's right. amazing. Awesome. That's a perfect video to create, Jill. <laughs> Do that whole thing and post that. So to let other, other people know, other sellers that, hey, I'm selling. Great idea, Scott. Thank you, Jill. Hey, um, feedback uh, from our manager meeting that we held um, earlier this week. We're concerned about the level of listings we have. There are so many buyers out in the market and we don't have enough listings just as Mike um, shows on his reports every week. And um, so one of the ways, if you had sellers withdraw or terminate because of fear of COVID, now is a great time to use your ninja skills, uh, which just is a, a relational call. How are you doing? How are you feel, feeling? How is your family? And um, just let them know that there are a lot of buyers in the market. And you know what, what Mike has been saying is, is that if you're waiting for seasonal conditions, they're here right now. And um, so we're seeing multiple offers, and in all price ranges. And um, so it's a great opportunity from a listing perspective to reach out to people who have been thinking about listing, have been talking about perhaps listing in the fall, withdrew or terminated their listings because of COVID. So anyone who knows me knows I love scripts and dialogues. Uh, here's one that you can use on prospecting. It's e easy, simple to make this call. Um, call your past clients or call into your farm areas and have this simple, quick conversation. Hi, it's Greg Gorman with John Arwood Properties. I'll be short and quick. Are you thinking about selling in the next year or this year? Because if you are, I would really love to interview for the job. Or if you know anyone that is selling, please introduce me. And you can also tag on to that if you're thinking about acquiring an investment property. Take that little script, make it your own, and it's under 30 seconds, and it lets people know that you're active uh, in the market and you're, you've got their best interests at hand. And I think that will generate some business for you. And you can also do that in social media. You can just post that. Greg, any final words of wisdom, gems that you would like to share? Um, I think the gem would be just like Nike, just do it. Uh, start off with one video. Uh, get inspired from that. Uh, it won't be perfect and you have to be okay with that. Um, speaking in front of so many people over the years, one thing I've learned, uh, your opinion of me is none of my business and that gives me the freedom to be me. So just do what you like and enjoy and share that on video because it'll attract the right amount of people. Those who don't like it or don't want it, they're probably not going to be your client anyway and let's just move forward with those who want to be around us. So one video, one time, and then you just keep repeating, 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 and you'll get better and more comfortable with that. And we I'm just one final, like I'm talking to champions already. So we had one final question. Lori Zorb would like to know if you use BombBomb. I don't. I think it's an awesome program, however. Um, 
and you can have a whole presentation with uh, with bomb bomb and it's it, it's a great especially for video email marketing it's just an awesome pro program and cloud cma now has a live version um, cloud cma live um, and mike will be sharing some additional information for that um, any other final questions all right, wait, take off your mutes and let's please just shout and, and, and applaud and let Greg hear your <laughs> gratitude. Um, wow, I just, we are so grateful that you're part of our team, Greg, and, and so blessed and that, that um, you're kind enough to share your wisdom and your experience. Thank you. Thanks everyone and make it a great day and I wanna see how it turns out on video. Thanks, Greg. Take so care, everyone.